spacecraft coming back from orbit or deep space will usually have a very high velocity relative to the Earth when it hits the atmosphere. As the spacecraft moves through the air at high speed, it starts to heat up due to friction with the air. The heat generated is so high that if left unchecked, it would literally melt the spacecraft. Luckily, spacecraft that plan to land safely on Earth do have a heat shield. This brings us to an interesting observation. On just about every spacecraft, the heat shield is only on the side pointed in the direction of motion. If the air is so hot that it can melt metal, then why are the heat shields located only on the side facing the direction of motion when in fact, the spacecraft is surrounded by very hot air? Something ain't right. If we think of friction as air rubbing against the spacecraft at very high speed, then a large part of the spacecraft that is not covered with heat shield will be exposed to this high speed airflow. An airflow so hot, it could turn spacecraft into what Arnold Schwarzenegger would call liquid meha. Right. But yet, they don't. So what's the deal? The truth is, relatively speaking, not much heat is generated from the air that's rushing and rubbing past the spacecraft. What's generating a tremendous amount of heat is the compression of the air that's directly in the path of the spacecraft. When any gas, for example, air is compressed, the temperature will go up. The higher the compression, the more heat that's generated. You can see this effect by closing off the end of the bicycle pump and pushing down on the piston. The pump will get warm. If we decrease the volume of the gas, the pressure will go up. And when the pressure goes up, the temperature will go up. Interestingly, if we increase the volume of the gas, the pressure will go down, and when the pressure goes down, the temperature will also go down. This is the basic principle that's used in refrigerators, but that's another video. Back to the compression of air. During re-entry, the spacecraft is moving at about 28,163 kilometers per hour, which is a little less than 25 times the speed of sound. At such a high speed, air that's directly in front doesn't have time to flow around the spacecraft. The air molecule can only move as fast as the speed of sound. Matter of fact, the speed of sound is really defined as the maximum speed at which air molecules can move. So with the spacecraft moving 25 times faster than that, the molecules quickly compress into a shock wave creating a region of high temperature and pressure. A shock wave can be described as a region of sudden change in air pressure and density. The change in air density is so sudden that you can actually see it in the shock wave in certain cases. Here we have an explosion that creates a blast of hot gas. As this gas moves, it pushes the air at supersonic speed. And just like our spacecraft during re-entry, the air cannot get out of the way of the hot gas fast enough. And once again, a shock wave is created. The air in the front of the hot gas is compressed and becomes so dense within a short distance that we can see the change in the index of refraction. Now, index of refraction is a measure of the speed of light relative to a vacuum. The main point here is that when light goes from one medium to another medium with a different index of refraction, it's bent. This is what causes a spoon to look bent in the glass of water, a prism to bend light into different colors, and our shock wave to be visible. Depending on the shape of the part of the spacecraft that's facing the airflow, the shock wave created can help cool, well, actually prevent more heating of the spacecraft. Depending how fast the spacecraft is going, the shock wave will form some distance away from the spacecraft. While this distance is small, it moves the area with the highest compression and heat away from the spacecraft body and also act in a way like a big deflector to the incoming air. Now, that's cool and it all makes sense. So, spacecraft are not fully covered with heat shield because most of the heat is not generated by the air rushing past the spacecraft. Instead, most of the heat generated is created by the compression of air that's directly in path of the spacecraft. When a gas is compressed, it heats up. In addition, the compression creates a shock wave. This shock wave, depending on the shape of the front part of the spacecraft, helps deflect air away further, minimizing heat of the spacecraft. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and most importantly, slap on that notification bell for more demystification of the strange and weird. I'm DexDFX.